Yo, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to Transit Talk NYC. Hope you guys are having an amazing day. And today we're going to be talking about the car assignments of the New York City subway. The New York City subway is home to a variety of different types of subway cars. And today I'm going to be predicting what's going to be changing about the car assignments of the New York City subway. Now keep in mind this is all speculation and this is all predictions. I don't know what's really going to happen, but this is my prediction. Now for today, we'll talk about the A division which was originally known as the IRT. I want to keep the video short and sweet, so in another video, we'll cover the B Division's car assignments. But for now, it's IRT time. And of course, if there's anyone new to learning about the car assignments of the New York City subway, we will go over all the basics as well in this video. Without further ado, let's talk. To start off, let's talk about the two factors that can cause changes to the car assignments. The first factor is the age of the existing fleet, and the second factor is compatibility with the fleet. I'm going to explain these two things right now. So age of the fleet is pretty self-explanatory. If the existing fleet is old enough where it is ready for retirement, then it would need to be replaced by cars that are younger, which would cause the change to the car assignments. It is actually pretty expensive to keep old trains for long periods of time. Because of their age, they could break down more and more frequently. You guys are probably wondering, oh, if the train breaks down, then it can just be easily repaired, right? Well, that's actually not true. If there are train cars that are too old, it would be extremely difficult to find replacement parts. And it just isn't economical enough if you have to repair the car after just a couple of trips over and over again. That's how you know it's too old if it has to keep going out of service just after a couple of trips. Now for the compatibility of the fleet. One New York City example would be communications based train control. Obviously, CBTC is only compatible with new technology trains equipped with the technology. So if there aren't new technology trains running on a line that is using the automated system, there would need to be a change of the fleet. So with that out of the way, let's start with the predictions. First, the 42nd Street Shuttle. Alright, so the 42nd Street Shuttle, I don't think it's going to get communication-based train control. It probably isn't because it's just a shuttle with two stops. However, I did hear a rumor that the 42nd Street Shuttle could be automated in the future. Now, when I say automated, I mean 100% automated, meaning it won't need an operator or anything, and it would basically work all on its own. Kind of like how the JFK Air Train works. But besides that, any other form of automation isn't really necessary on this line. But as far as the car assignments go on the shuttle, it's obvious that they'll be replaced by the new R262 cars, because the R62A cars that are running on it are pretty old. Sure, the cars are running quite well, but the R62A cars will turn 40 years old in 2025. I don't think there has to be a rush to retire these cars. Like I just said, they're running alright. Keep in mind that we still have R46 cars in service right now, and they'll be turning 50. So there's really no rush to retire these cars. But one thing's for sure, they'll be replaced by the R262s. I'll go into more detail about the R262s in just a second when we get to the rest of the IRT lines. Now for the 7 line. The 7 line uses CBTC equipped R188 cars. Because of this, there is no need to swap out the R188 cars for compatibility purposes because the CBTC equipped cars are currently working on the flushing line, which is automated with the same technology. You already know what they say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But the 7 line uses 11 car R188s instead of 10, and those 11 cars are composed of a 5 car consist paired up with a 6 car consist. One thing I find strange is that it is pretty hard to determine how old the R188 cars are. Of course, a majority of the R188 fleet is made up of R142A cars that were converted. Those R142As date back to 1999 to the early 2000s. However, the new R188 cars were purchased in the early 2010s to accommodate for new sets and C cars. For those who are unaware of what C cars are, those C cars make up the 11th car in the entire set. I just mentioned this because it's pretty tricky to determine how old the R188 actually is, but it's safe to say that the R188 won't really need to be replaced anytime soon, and from the looks of it, the 7 will be keeping its R188 cars. Before we continue, just a quick reminder, if you are enjoying the video so far, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Alright, now it's time to talk about the 1, 2, 3, 
four, five, and six lines. Now here is where things get a little more complicated, so we'll need some extra information. But to start, what cars do these lines currently use? The one and six lines are currently composed of R62A cars, just like the 42nd Street Shuttle. The three line is fully composed of R62 cars, which are kind of similar to the R62As. The two and five line are fully composed of R142 cars. And finally, the four line has a mixture of R142 and R142A cars, which both of them being similar to each other. However, one thing to note is that the R142 and R142A are not interchangeable as they are both built by different manufacturers. Now, in the beginning, I did mention two factors that could cause changes to the car assignments. But out of those two factors, I think the biggest factor that will affect the car assignments on the rest of the A division has to be the compatibility factor, which of course involves communications-based train control. Why? Well, first off, the R142 and R142A cars have the technology to work with CBTC, and they're still extremely young. So maybe we will be able to see R142 and R142A cars have their assignments change whenever the advanced train control is implemented. Next, the R62 and R62A cars, which are unable to work with communication-based train control. Now, yes, this is semi-related to the age of the cars because they were manufactured in an era where building cars with new technology wasn't even a thought, right? But the cars are still pretty young with both of the models first entering service in the mid-1980s, which of course makes them around the age of 38 years old right now. Cars usually get replaced when they are in their early to mid-40s. Also, the two cars are well taken care of. There are not many incidents of the cars failing or breaking down recently, so there is really no rush to retire these cars at the moment. It's not like they're breaking down left and right. So I think it's safe to say that if there is any change to whatever lines the R62 and R62A are running on, then it's most likely because of communications-based train control. Now, of course, that is at least for now, while the cars are still young. Now, speaking of communications-based train control, with the announcement of the MTA's Fast Forward Report in 2018 by former President Andy Byford, the MTA announced that CBTC will be installed on a majority of the entire subway system. And this includes many portions of the one, two, three, four, five, and six lines. So by default, there would need to be some sort of change to the equipment to allow for CBTC, as long as the R62 and R62A cars remain in service. And just like I mentioned, they will, at least for now. So in my eyes, the best thing to do is to just outright replace the R62 and R62As whenever CBTC is ready in the future. The cars lack the technology to work with it, and when the time comes, they will be the age when retirement becomes absolutely necessary. So, when will CBTC even be ready? Looking back at the fast forward report, the Lexington Avenue 4, 5, and 6 line is scheduled to get CBTC prior to the 7th Avenue 1, 2, and 3 line. I don't think they'll start CBTC on Lexington yet. One reason is because 8th Avenue, Culver, and Queens Boulevard are all in the works right now. Queens Boulevard is almost finished, but it is likely that the Crosstown line will be next to get the installation of CBTC. Also, I don't think they'll work on multiple CBTC projects at the same time. So I think maybe in the late 2020s, like 2024 to 2029, that span, we could see CBTC start to get configured on the Lexington Avenue line. Now, in the MTA's January 2019 Capital Program Oversight Committee meeting, it was announced that the R142 and R142A cars will get CBTC technology installed on them, and other improvements to the train's mechanics and systems were also proposed. In the same CPOC, the R262 cars were announced to replace the R62 and R62A to allow for CBTC and fleet expansion. However, it was one year later in the January 2020 Capital Program Oversight Committee meeting where they announced that the base and option order for the cars will be funded in their 2020 to 2024 capital program and the anticipation of the contract being awarded in the first quarter of 2021. Now, of course, it is currently the first quarter of 2022 and the MTA hasn't publicly announced whether anything happened or not. So, when will the R262 contract be awarded? They did mention that the base order will be funded in the 2020 to 2024 capital program. So I predict that the contract should be awarded in that span. But my three guesses are the end of 2022, early 2023, or late 2024 
for the R262 contract award. If the contract is awarded around those times, the cars will be able to arrive on time for CBTC implementation. Now one crucial thing to note is that it actually takes around 30 months or two and a half years for the first pilot test train to arrive after the contract has been awarded. So if they award the contract at let's say early 2023, then the first car will arrive by mid 2025 to undergo testing, which should be in time for CBTC implementation. Now, of course, this is my prediction, but I do hope they award the contract soon because they are behind when they initially announce that they'll award the contract. So with all this information out of the way, finally time to predict what cars will be on what lines. With Lexington Avenue's four, five, and six lines, being the first of the A division to get communications-based train control, it could be a good guess that the RN42 and RN42A will stay on the 4 and 5 since those two cars are compatible with CVTC and is eligible to get it installed on them. But what about the 6 line? For one, I heard many people rumor that the 6 line may take RN42 cars from the 2 line, but I don't think that would be the case. One big reason is the 2 and 5 train thing where they interchange each other's fleet. Having R62As on the 2 line and then having to swap them with RN42s would be quite a mess. The system worked perfectly with the 2 and 5 having the same RN42s. Another rumor is that maybe R62 and R62A from the 3 and 1 line would move to the 4 and 5, making Lexington 100% equipped with SMEs. And then the R262 would then replace all of the R62 and R62A from the 4, 5, and 6. This is the most likely to happen, Lexington using R262s at the end of the swaps, but not really in that way of moving all the R62s over before they get replaced. I just don't like that idea moving the SMEs to Lexington just to retire them after. I don't really think that's a smart idea. Once again, Lexington is getting CBTC first, so it's not like the RN42 and RN42As will move to Broadway and 7th so they can get CBTC first. I don't know, but I just find that to be weird, right? But the good thing for this idea is that if we jump back one last time into the January 2020 Capital Program Oversight Committee meeting, it appears to be in favor of the latter idea that I just mentioned, with Lexington using R262s and Broadway 7th Avenue using RN42 and RN42As. So I think it's pretty safe to say that these will be the future car assignments for the A division once the R262 cars start rolling in. In my opinion, I think the 2 and 5 should keep their R142s so they can do their swap thing freely, but these are still new technology trains so I assume it wouldn't hurt at all. Now one thing I notice about communications based train control is that the MTA likes to keep lines locked to one type of equipment. If you look over at other lines that have communications based train control, they only have one type of equipment. Queens Boulevard, what does that have? All R160s. Flushing line, all R188s. And finally the L line, all R143s. Well, almost all R143s. There are some R160s, but you get the point. So once again, I think R262 is going to Lexington and all the RN42s and A's going to 7th just makes the most sense. Now another thing that I just noticed, it's an itty bitty thing, but I feel like the renders sort of just tell you what lines the new subway cars are most likely to go to. If we take a look at the R211's early renders and the mock-up that they had, you can see that they advertised it as an A train. And if we fast forward to now, the R211s are going to the A line. And of course, the R262s, the renders advertise it as a 5 train. So that goes in line with what we just said about the R262s going to Lexington Avenue 4, 5, and 6 line. So whatever line they advertise the early renders of the car with, that probably means it's going to go to that line. But that's about it for this video. We just predicted the future car assignments for the A division. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below. Do you disagree with me or agree? Let me know in the comments. But that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed. Comment and subscribe. Make sure you check out my extras channel link in the description. Make sure you join my Discord server, discord.link slash transit talk. And of course, head on over to my Instagram, transit talk NYC, posting cool photos over there. But that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next one. Peace out.